Hello, everybody. Welcome to Word Hello. on Wednesday. <laughs> Jenny and Tiffany here. Yay. Super excited to have you guys. Thanks for jumping on today. So we are going to do what we've done for the last three and a half, four years. Lots of Wait years. a minute. We started in August of 2000. Okay, come on, Jenny. What year was we it? We were in your White House. That's all I remember. 18. I think Maybe. it was 2018. Yes. Okay. Because we were headed into 2019, her voice. That's right. And we yep. wanted to do it leading up to. That's right. And then our plan was just to do this every Wednesday up till the 2019, mm -hmm. um, her voice, which was in December. So we went from August to December and then we just kept showing up every Wednesday. So <laughs> here we are. I think that we is are. four. Is that four years? Help me. 2018. Yes. 22. Yes. Four. Amazing. Four years. Happy four amazing. years. Sometime this month. Wow. Maybe it was today. That's Who knows? amazing. Who knows? Good we memory. could probably go back. I know. I'm, I'm not Good the job. time girl. I'm usually not the time girl, but <laughs> I'm the strategy girl. So I remember oh, thinking, I how it. are we going to get in front of people yes, leading up to the right. So I do remember that. But we are really glad that um, God wants us to do this every single Wednesday because it gives us a chance to just get with you guys and prophesy over you, of course, but also let you know what's happening here in the ministry. And we really believe this is a big family. And mm -hmm. so we know that you're a part of this and we're so happy that you're a part of what God is doing. So our number one mission, the number one mission of Her Voice Movement is to plant one million prayer hubs, to mobilize one million women into prayer. Mm -hmm. And we're measuring that by all of the people who've gone onto our website, hervoicemovement.com, and they've applied to start a prayer hub, to lead a prayer hub. So you can go to hervoicemovement.com and we want you to plant that prayer hub. And you know what? A prayer hub is so simple, you guys. It's you plus at least one other person. We don't want your group to get bigger than 10. So it's not a whole lot of people because we want everybody in your group praying. That's we right. give you prayer points that cover the country, the nation, the government, your state, your county, your education system, your family, and then you personally. And it is so powerful. It is so powerful what's happening. I actually need to testify uh, something that happened yeah. uh, from our prayer hub. So we had our prayer hub the other day, actually exactly a week ago, we got together and prayed. And, you know, we were going over the education piece because there's 30 points that we give you. And we're just kind of reading off, you know, we're, we're using our voice to agree with the word of God. And we're just praying the word of God. And in the section over the education system, you know, I think if you're a parent or maybe anybody at this point feels the, we feel God get into our school system. God get to our children. Think about how, um, think about how influential the education system is for the future of America, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the future of America is our children. That's right. Cause they're going to be leading us not too long from now. They yep. will be our leaders. They will be making decisions. Yep. And we want them making godly decisions. We want them making wise decisions. And so right now they are, their brains are being formed. They're being nurtured. They're being mentored by the education system. And then of course the family unit, you know, we're all about the family unit, but we cannot ignore the education system. We cannot ignore the fact that schools play a large part of shaping our culture and shaping our future leadership. So this education piece is so it's just so important as you all know. Right. So we're praying about this and here is my, um, Here's my testimony. Okay. So for, for our church, the collective church that Tiffany is on leadership for, and we co-pastor with Ben and Heather Rose, we have had these prophetic words for many years that our church would have a school. Well, that was prior to COVID. That was prior to some like mm -hmm. real reasons mm -hmm. to go, okay, let's do this. Yep. And pastor Heather has been the one that's really been targeted for these prophetic words because it's really on her life. She has the mandate mm -hmm. to build a school system. And so she did that. She put that in place over a year ago. And then over here on our end of Portland. So we are positioned on the ends of Portland. On one end is our church. On the other end is um, to Telestai Ministries, our headquarters. And so over here, we have education happening with the littles, with the little kids. And so it's just something that we've been praying about. It's something that we're um, also looking at the community saying, right. okay, there are kids that are coming through like the basketball um, program that you and Jeremy are leading. Mm -hmm. There's kids coming from all these mm -hmm. different directions who need a good school. They yeah. need a good education. They need a godly education. They need godly leadership. And so yep. we're, we're, you know, just saying yes. Heather's just saying yes. We're just, you know, I'm saying yes to getting my kids there. Okay. <laughs> That's about the only part I play. Right. right? <laughs> um, 
and, but there's prayer, right? So we prayed this last week, just praying over the education system and over um, our area and over the nation, of course. And then I get connected to a woman yesterday. I haven't even told you about this, Tiffany, mm. but I got connected to a woman out of um, Orange County and she's been in homeschooling for 22 years, but she really uh, functions in an apostolic role in her ministry, which is helping churches establish their nonprofit schools and, um, you know, high kingdom, like the like kingdom, kingdom schools where there is music, there's leadership, there's all these different things that we care about. But what she does is she goes into places and helps um, consult and establish these schools. Mm. And so for people saying, yes, God is sending help. God, again, we talked about Amen. this before, but the earth Amen. reflects your yes. So as we keep saying, yes, God is sending right. resources. He's wow. sending people. And I was thinking, man, that was pretty quick because we just prayed last week for the first prayer hub and we we're praying for the education system. We we're praying for God to bring resources. We we're praying for right. God to bring people who know more than we do. And all of a sudden I get this connection. I'm on a zoom with her yesterday wow. and now I'm getting her connected to Heather and Michelle and That's Janelle amazing. and some other people wow. that have their hands deep in this. And so I just want to um, encourage you to pray, encourage you to start a prayer hub because the Bible says we're two or more gather and ask in my name, Jesus says, then it will be done. And that's what we did. And less than a week later, here we have a person who is going to be an incredible, incredible resource for us so that we're not just floundering. We're not just kind of just trial and error, you know? Right. So anyway, you know, there's all these stories happening. There's so many of these stories happening. And so I believe that with prayer, it is like a fast forward button. It is the, it is the like straight, it's the straight path to where you want to be. Why would mm -hmm. we try to figure things out without prayer? Why would we try to figure things out in our own strength? And so go to hervoicemovement.com, apply to start a prayer hub. We are right now over 400 prayer hubs, which I just want to celebrate and say, thank you, Jesus. Yes. yes. Because yes, it's only been five weeks since her voice. Wow. And in five weeks, we've gone from zero prayer hubs to over 400. And I think that is incredible growth wow. and we're headed to a million. It really is. It's wow. just incredible. I mean, it is incredible. and they're all in the system. They're not just like in theory, right? But they're in the system. They're mm -hmm. inviting their uh, neighborhood. They're inviting their, you know, different. Or in fact, if you have an organization, I was telling this um, gal yesterday that I was just speaking of, if you have an organization or you have um, a church, what you can do is you can establish prayer hubs inside the entity that you're in charge of. So let's say that you're a pastor of a church. You could you can actually have let, okay, I'll use Collective Church, my church, for example. So mm -hmm. we're getting people together and we're saying, okay, who wants to start a prayer hub? And let's say 50 people start a prayer hub in our church. Then they can go in the system. And if they want to, if they choose to, they can tag that with their name, of course, but they can tag it as a Collective Church prayer hub. So then people in the church who want to join a prayer hub, yes. maybe they don't want to leave one, but they want to join one, can go into our app which is the church center app. It's yeah. it's a very well-known app across the church world, but they can go in that app and they can search for a prayer hub in their church. And then people are getting plugged into prayer hubs. And it just dawned on me, man, if people did this inside churches, then what's going to happen is we're going to have praying churches. Now oh, wow. that might sound like, well, that's church. Of course people pray. What I have found <laughs> out is actually that yeah, most people that. do not wow. have a dedicated prayer life. They do not have a consecrated prayer life because the enemy is doing everything he yep. can to keep people right. out of prayer. That's right. But when you get together, there's a time on the calendar mm -hmm. and you're going and you're committed and it's once a month for one hour. I mean, it's just too easy to just say yes to that. Right. So I was seeing different leaders getting their, their prayer hub established and tagging it within their organization. Maybe you run a homeschool co-op. And you want to have prayer hubs in your yeah. co-op. Maybe you have a restaurant and you have Christians that work for you, believers, and there's three people that want to start a prayer hub. And maybe you want to tag it with your restaurant name on there. I'm, I'm serious about this. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen organizations tagging so that people can come in and say, yes. okay, I want to join a prayer hub that's part of this homeschool co-op I'm, I'm a part of, you know, that kind of thing. So be thinking about that. All right. And then next up, we have 
very limited space for this. I think we have about 17 or 18 more spots after we put our own leadership team in because our, our whole leadership team for our church has to go into this intensive. But the intensive coming up on September 21st through the 23rd, that is called Encountering God. It's our Encountering God intensive. And it it is going to be ran by and the impartation of the ministers comes from people who are worship leaders. And when I say worship leaders, I don't just mean they show up on a Sunday morning and um, pull a set off, which is incredible, right, in and of itself. But I'm talking about people who are pillars in the body of Christ who are ushering in the presence of God, not just in worship settings and worship services, which is really, we need that, but they're also doing it in other spaces. They're doing it outside the church through songwriting, through music. But here's the thing. This isn't just for people on worship teams. When I, I was on a Zoom with Leland Mooring and Don Potter, and if you know either of them, you're just saying yes to coming right there. I don't even have to tell yeah. you more. <laughs> but in case you don't know who they are, let me tell a little bit more. But they were sharing just what was in them. And when I was hearing them talk, I was like, okay, all of my friends that are not on worship teams are going to be here because they're not going to miss this. They're not going to miss the impartation coming from Don Potter and Leland Mooring just right there. Yeah. Never mind the fact that we have Callie Ship Gray, we have Cindy Mooring, we have Heather Rose, we have Pastor Melanie Faust, who will become a new introduction to the family. She is a worship leader at Oceans Church in mm. Orange County, California. And we have um, my daughter Hannah will come and she'll be talking about songwriting out like evangelically. And then also Brant Colella will be there too, Pastor Brant Colella, who is a worship leader, pastor at the Collective Church. So we just have this host of people coming. But when I was hearing them talk about what was in them, you guys, it is not just for people <laughs> on worship teams. It is for the person who says, I am leading a Bible study and yeah. I want people to come and I want them to encounter God. Yes. I am leading children because I'm a mother and I want them to encounter yes. God. Yes. Do you know how people encounter God is when you encounter him? And when you encounter God, you've heard his voice, you understand his heart, you felt his mind, you felt his heart, yeah. and you feel as if there is no separation between the two of you. When that happens as a lifestyle, you get to carry that. Mm. You get to carry that encounter that. to people. Yes. And so realistically, we have like 17 or 18 more spots. So I'm probably spending too much time on this because it's going to fill up really fast. But I tell you that so that you don't wait and then text us and say, wait a minute, it's sold out. Why didn't I get in? So you're going to have to make quick decisions, pray, ask God about this. It is mm -hmm. all inclusive. It's three days, three nights. We feed you amazing food. You have a great place to stay. You're going to meet new friends and you just have to get yourself up the mountain and get yourself back to the airport. And we're going to um, we're going to have an incredible time together. And you're going to meet new people. I said this, I think, a couple weeks ago, but I really believe that there's divine connections. Yes. I just prophesy that there's going to be divine yes. connections that you make when you're here, people that you don't know right now. That's right. And you need to know them. You need to know them because and they need to know you. And there's going to be divine connections. That's right. There could be businesses waiting for people to collaborate with. There could be albums that are waiting to yes. collaborate with. There could be books to collaborate. There could be ministries. There could just be families mm -hmm. that you're supposed to meet and do life with because they want God as deeply as you do. And your children need other friends who are in families that are also like theirs. All right. So there is just going to, and I can, I can feel it. The spirit of God is telling me that there's going to be a great merging of connections and so mm -hmm. you're going to get everything and more that I described. But what about the connections? Let's not even overlook that because, you know, you, my husband says this all the time, but our life ends up being a result of the people we yes. meet, the books we read and the things that we look at, what we watch, what we let our eyes look at. So our eyes um, what and what we read, which is the information we decide to put inside of us and the people we meet. Yeah. And so that is true. You can look at your destiny and go, whoa, if I wouldn't have met this person, this wouldn't have happened. That's right. If I wouldn't have encountered this book, this wouldn't have happened. You know, if I kept up with this um, sin in my life, looking at things I shouldn't look at, I would be down, off a cliff by now. But God mm -hmm. came and intervened and he guarded mm -hmm. my eyes and he turned That's right. my eyes to look at things that were um, holy and good and loving and kind and mm -hmm. worth looking at. So so good. Um, yeah, so this is what God's doing. It's a it's a bigger picture than just headed to a retreat for a weekend. It's right. it's I, I believe right. that it is a stepping stone to a new path for many people. So pray about it. Um, we want you there. The early bird does end, I think, August August 31st, which is a week from today. 
So you have one more week for the early bird price and then it goes up a hundred dollars. So you might as well get in on early bird if you can. All right. So, so um, what's on your heart? What's Jesus? Been yeah. Talking to you about? Well, I mean, just to first of all, confirm what you were saying about yeah. the connections that yes. has literally happened. I've watched that happen. Yeah. I mean, we have like every single intensive, there is something on the intensives as far mm -hmm. as relationship. And I've seen like women even gathering in, in groups of people and getting Airbnbs and yep. coming to rallies all across yep. the after nation they after they met here yep. and then staying together for her voice and all of that. And so I just love, I love, love, love that. Yes. And I know God is on that big time with yes, these. And um, I don't quite understand it, but I just know that the divine connections are a hundred percent true. Yes. Um, and if you've ever been in the room with Don Potter, I mean, it's, it's literally, you're literally going to have to trust us on this one. If you have no idea, <laughs> because it is mind blowing what comes out of that man's spirit and yeah. mouth. Just like the, you can't, I can't even same. explain it. I can't even explain it. It's unexplainable. Well, let just ask yourself this question. If you were in the room and Jesus was talking and then you left after even an hour or two, you wouldn't be the same. <laughs> that guy's really close to heaven. Let well, me let's just, just talk about this. And that's where I want to be. That's no why kidding. I'm gonna be there. No, totally. And like, think about this. Our, our only drenched that we heard a testimony of Jesus actually like yeah. Coming to a person like a face to, to face yes, was when again. Don Potter was there. Yeah, tell the story. Oh, oh gosh, so the story. How many drenches. There's, there's been 50, yeah. 60 drenches maybe. Yeah. But we had one that Don Potter was at. Yeah. So that's a that's a good point. I've never yep. even thought about that. I just thought about right now. God just reminded me because there's this there's this man there that was totally not in agreement with what was going on. Did not believe in Jesus. I think he was even a part of a different like a whole yeah. different he background. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and religion and all this stuff he had been, he'd been searching a lot of different things from what, what we've heard. And then in a moment, Jesus literally walked into the room right up to this man and he got saved like by a personal encounter with Jesus. And when you hear this story, when you hear him tell it, it's like, Oh, but that's the only time I've ever heard of that mm -hmm. happening. And that mm -hmm. was when Don Potter was in the room. So I'm just telling you like, just seriously, Don Potter. I of just those can't people. explain it. Yeah, he's one of those people where. So when I uh, when we first started drenches and God was like, okay, so Jenny, if you were gonna have people over, like girls, like we're all gonna hang out, would you all sit like this in chairs, shoulder to shoulder, right. like this, and like in a line, right. and just okay, <laughs> Tiffany, your turn to talk. Stand right there, and we'll all watch you. Okay, you know, it's like no, we would all like be in a. We would set, circle around a kitchen island. We would circle yes. around a living room, right? Or some of us sit on the floor and. You know, yes. we would just like girls, like that's just what we do. And so he said, I want you to mimic drenches off of that. And so that's I was right. like, well, okay. So we, we had exercise mats, everyone plopped down, they got pillows, they got blankets and it was really different. And it was a good different. It was great. It was like, nobody could find their church posts. Nobody could find religion. It was like, <laughs> yeah. okay, I guess I'll not be religious. I guess I'll just love Jesus. That's what I'll do right now. <laughs> and so that was incredible. And then we had, we were in this circle and I got, we got obsessed. We're still obsessed with circles. And um, the band playing in the middle <laughs> and they're all facing each other. And I'm like, I don't know why it's right. It yeah, just is, yeah. you know? And so, but Don, he's the guy I ask these questions to. Like, if anybody knows why I'm obsessed with circles in the spirit, it's going to be him. <laughs> right. Because most of the stuff I do, I know it's, I, I'm like, I'm compelled, but I have no idea how it relates to the spirit. And so I asked him, I said, okay, Don, I'm really obsessed with people in a circle and the band in a mm -hmm, circle. Mm -hmm. And just tell me, is yeah, there any yeah. spiritual reason behind this? And he said, well, yeah. And the, you know, his answers are always like, of course, of you course. know, <laughs> but he said, well, the spirit of performance can't latch on to a worship team um, when they're in the middle because their butt is facing somebody. And I was like, okay, yes, <laughs> yes, that makes sense, right? Because totally. you can't perform for, totally. right? And it's, so it takes away the stage setting, which, I mean, the, the big joke is I keep telling Bob, like, hey, will you um, rearrange our church so the stage is in the center, right? After it's all completely built out, it's going to be a little hard to do that. Um, but I'm still waiting. I'm, I'm waiting for that one day, <laughs> That's something, right. something like that. That's right. Um, and so uh, then the circle, it means together. That's that's what the word circle means. It wow. means together. So there's a unity. There's something in it. In fact, on Monday nights, our worship team, our youth worship team, they're always in the center for you know a couple of years now. Well, we, we I think it was for her voice. We had to clear the floor. We had to put the instruments mm -hmm. up on the stage. So they've been there, which is fine. Um, but it's different. It is different. It's different. It's totally different. On Monday night, I was like, we got to get back to the circle. I thought get the back. same exact thing. <laughs> That's so funny. So then we circle the kids up when we talk and it's yeah. it's a really cool thing. So 
Anyway, I say all that because Don Potter is going to share some things that all of a sudden it's like click, click, yep. like, like the lights are just going to yep. turn on. And I wish we could take 200 people in these intensives, but the reason that we don't and um, we, we keep it small is because we do, um, it's intensive style. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not just preach at you. You listen type yeah. of thing. It's intensive style. We do workshops. We do going outside and praying. We do an inter we do interactive things. We do activations. And so it's just, um, getting down to the nitty gritty and it's not possible to do that in large, large crowds at this time. Mm -hmm. So, um, like I said, only 17, 18 more spots. I'm not sure we have to put all of our worship, our worship team in. In fact, there's somebody on here that you need to bring like three of your worship team leaders. They need to be here because I'm prophesying that because you're and your church needs to potentially invest in that. Like, um, we took our entire worship team paid for their flights, the whole nine to Houston, Texas for Leland and, celebration of life for their worship conference. You know why? Because we're relying on our worship team being infused with heaven. That's right. Being infused with God, being right. close to God, feeling very intimate with mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit, and then bringing that to everybody on Sunday. That's right. It's not just, can you play an instrument well, although I believe in that, but that's not it. That's not enough. There has to be some kind of encounter experience. And so I just saw that there's a there's a pastor on here. You do have the authority to say yes, to pay for three people. It might be more, but I see at least three people that you guys are going to yeah. pay for to come. come you're going to invest in them. And you're, um, you know, one of the things that you can do just, you know, you probably already know this if you're a leader, but if you want to invest in people from your church, you can ask them to make an offering back to your church. If you're paying for the registration, you can just say, hey, we just want you to make an offering, you know, of whatever you pray for, make it back into the, into the church. And you don't have to do that either. But that's kind of a good thing to get people um, that they put something in. There's some type of deposit mm -hmm. monetarily because it's good. where our um, treasure is there, our heart is also. And so we tend to care about the things that we put some money into. So anyway, those are just some things that we've done that um, work really well and investing in our worship team, investing in our leaders, or, you know, some of you need to bring your small group leaders. You want people to walk into homes and them encounter God. You don't want yeah. them to encounter just a Bible study on paper. You want them to encounter God and that leader can bring that atmosphere. They, they really can. And that's what we're going to be doing at this intensive. So it's going to be amazing. Yeah. We really want you guys um, to pray about that, about mm -hmm. coming. So, well, I want to testify too with, um, cause I just saw someone said, uh, just like you always say, Jenny, God's will, God's bill. Yep. And it is, it is true. Um, you know, I've really been putting this part of my life into practice with, you know, asking the Lord to provide for Amen. things that, that I desire to take my family to Amen. and things that I want to, you know, pour my time and finances into. And so, um, we had a, we were all taking a group of kids down to Gen Z for Jesus in Texas. And, you know, I wanted my kids plus a friend to go, yep. you know, and not only that, but I wanted Jeremy and I to go too. And so like, we just yep. sat before God and just asked him, you know, Lord, Amen. here's, here's, what we're looking at for plane tickets here's you know and then plus the additional costs would you provide and within a few minutes um an amount hit my venmo that i i knew was coming but i didn't know it was coming so here's the thing is and this is what i challenged my husband with as i said we can pray for this money but when it comes in we don't get to question if no if that was what no. the, if that's what it's actually for Okay. So like, that's we, just doubting yourself. Right. Point. Well, yeah. it's like, okay, well, you know, yeah, we're, we're doing this, you know, this thing. And, you know, so there is supposed to be money coming in, not sure when, not sure how much, you know, and then this amount hits the account and we're like, okay, I, th I think we need to go. And so we get on and look on plane tickets and I sure enough, that. you know, exactly. Sure enough that all the, it's all right there. And so we book, you know, I think it was, uh, so me and my husband and then four kids. So six people to go when we are like, amazing. how are we going to go? God, right. We're like, how are we going to go? And then boom, six plane tickets, mm -hmm. like just like that. And, but we had to act, we had to act yep. on going, okay, God, we're believing for this money. And then boom, there's the money. And then here's the thing. And I feel like someone needs to hear this. You need to decide where you're going to put that money. 
you know, it can go into the savings account. It can go into, you know, a new thing for your home that you've been wanting to do or whatever. But when you put that money into kingdom um, ground and, and you like, okay, yeah, I know this is the 15th conference I've been to, or the, I've been to every intensive. Why do I need to go to another one or whatever? But every time you sow seed into yourself, into kingdom growth, I'm telling you, it multiplies and pays off every single time. And so I just, I just had to come to the decision of, and my husband too, like, you know, like we don't, we don't have just a ton of money to work with right now. However, we do have money that we can work with and, and we have to decide where is that money going? Are we going to live our life right now in this season, just saving money because it feels good to have money in the bank account? I'm just saying that's what he's challenging us with. It it feels good to look at the bank account and see money there. Like that's great, right? But right now in this season, God's asking us to spend the money on things that matter for kingdom purposes for eternity. And I'm telling you, these kids, like they're going to be radically impacted. We're going to be radically impacted. I know that, but we just have to decide like, okay, what are we going to do? What feels good? Or are we going to do what is a stretch and what God is asking us to do with our money? And so I just, I have to have the mindset right now that I'm going to invest and it's going to come back. Mm -hmm. The money's coming back. It's, I'm not going to be, you know, doing, I'm not doing stupid. I'm not going to buy a TV. I'm not going to buy, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like there's just different things that we have to really look at where, where and why our money is going Mm -hmm. like, why I think too. Yeah. Help me with that process. Well, I think too, everything you're saying is awesome. It's about, um, if you really think perhaps more money is not coming in. Yes. That's where you get stuck. Yeah. Because you're thinking you're, you're trying to anticipate the future. And so, um, that's good. You just know that God, he gives seed to the sower. So if you're sowing, he's going to give you more seed. That mm-hmm. that is that is a principle that you can yeah. camp out on. And just like if I said, "Hey, I want you to go to the roof of your house and jump in the air," and we would all agree that you're going to go down, not up, mm-hmm. right? You're going to go down. You're not going up because there's a principle. It's called gravity. Well, there's a principle. There's lots of them. There's lots of principles in the Bible. And the, the economic principle is that God gives seed yeah. to the one who is sowing. So as we sow seed and we empty, we empty our seed bag, which is our money. We're emptying it. Wow. We're emptying it. He goes, okay, more. And he puts it in. So if, if that's seed. Okay. And seed is also, are we contributing to the place we call our home church? Mm-hmm. Are we contributing to the ministries that are growing us right now? Are we, um, you know, I, I'm a strong believer that it's all gods. Okay. But a 10th of it, that just needs to go straight off the top to your local church. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just believe that I'm not a, um, I'm not a formula girl. I'm not like exactly move the decimal over, you know, one, exactly that I I'm just saying that's a, that's a, that's a fair, like my, my church my church is, is, is the pot of soil that I'm choosing to grow my family right. in. And I want to contribute to the soil. I want to contribute to the nourishment of this church mm-hmm. and give 20%, give 30%. Like there's no laws around this. Yeah. Um, but the principle is when we sow, God says, oh, there's a sower. So I'm going to give more seed to them. So as long as we're sowing and we're not hoarding, Mm. then you can just know that money's coming. Yeah. God, God already has plans to give you a replenishment of what you're pouring out. Now, if we're sowing into like my vacation, my TV, my couch, my this, my this, and then we call it sewing. Right. I don't think that's sewing. I think that's purchasing and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm-mm. Right. There's nothing wrong with purchasing things, but I'm talking about sowing into the kingdom of God because a seed then multiplies and it becomes more. I'll give an example. Somebody sows money into Tetelestai Ministries and they're like, oh, it's only $50, Jenny. It's like, eh. you know what that does? Every Monday, it's about $150, $180 to feed the kids that come here. So $50, you are feeding a third of the kids that come That's here right. every Monday night. There's That's about right. 60 kids. So you're feeding 20 children. 
Yeah. You're causing 20 kids to want to come back the next week because food does that. And guess what's happening? They're hearing the gospel. Could you imagine how many kids, how many seeds of the yes. gospel we're reading the word? I mean, we're opening it up. We have, they have their Bibles out there. We're passing the microphone. They're talking about prayer. They're giving testimonies. We're stretching them. And you know what? Without food, they, they, they dwindle off. Okay. <laughs> they don't come back. So you might think, Oh, what's my measly $50, you know, right. I'm telling you what's happening is there's more than you think. Mm -hmm. Just like my friend who said she took a pepper, a red pepper. She dried out all the seeds. She counted the seeds. There was 250. She took um, 25 of them. So 10% wow. of the seeds out of the pepper. She put it in her raised beds because she's planting a garden. She's doing all that. And she said that she got 150 peppers out of out of 25 seeds. And she said if she would have planted them a little further apart from each other, there would have probably been more like 250 red wow. peppers. Wow. And she goes, and now I have 90% of the seed that's that I just dried and I don't know what to do with. But that's the principle of the kingdom of God wow. is that when you come sow on. a seed, I love that. you're not just planting a pepper to come back. I mean, it's like 25 seeds produced 150 peppers, could have been more. And then all of those peppers have 250 seeds. So 250 <laughs> seeds at least inside 150 peppers. Like the kingdom of God is radical. It is a multiplying kingdom. That's so, amazing. so when you plant $50 for a dinner for the yeah. Dallas Type Ministries, yeah, it's like, right. what's that? It's a lot. So you can be proud of the seed you're sowing. You can be proud of what you're putting in. That's in right. fact, I wasn't going to go here because I didn't even think about it. But I am going to challenge everybody today. If you are not giving to your local church, I want you to start doing that. Mm -hmm. I want you to start giving and sowing. And think of that dollar as a think of that dollar as a little pepper seed that's going to sprout up. Right? It's going to cause people wow. to know Christ. It's going to cause so people good, to get free. Come and on. if to tell us time ministries has blessed you at all, I am going to ask you mm -hmm. to consider and prayerfully ask God: Would you want me to be a monthly partner? Now, a monthly partner could be 10 bucks a month. And you might think, oh, that's so little. I might as well do zero. <laughs> Which has stopped me from giving in the past, Yes, by the way. And I Go saw there. this quote really yeah. quick. Just really quick. I saw this quote on social media and it said, well, who am I? I am just one person, says 7 billion people. And I was like, oh, dear God, mm -hmm. we have absolutely been de deceived yep. Yep. that our yep. little self Yep can do not much, Yep. you know, but you put us all together, you put all of our seed together, you put all of it. And it's like, if you get a few more people saying, well, actually what I do matters. Actually, I am, I, I, I am yeah. mattering. My $10 does matter. It does add up because someone else is going to give $10 and someone else is going to give 20. And so I'm just going to do my part. And so I think that we have to wake up to the fact that it's not everyone else's job to do the things that matter to God. It's That's right. our job. And so as we do our job, it's not only spurs on someone else to do their job in the kingdom, but it also adds to the big picture. Yep. And so I just, I, I really was radically shaken by that, that quote. And it's so true. Cause it's like, what do I matter? And 7 billion people are saying that. What if 7 billion people said, actually what I do matters. Think mm -hmm. about that's an army. That's well, you know I'll what I'm saying? You, let me give you this. This is kind of cool just to give you like a exact exact way that this could work. So God was talking to me about this the other day about asking for $10 partners, monthly partners. And I love that because you know what? Coffee shops usually get more than that from us, right? Um, love my coffee. Keep doing that. But what can $10 do? A lot of people think nothing, but you know what? We have over 400 prayer hubs right now. Let's just say the prayer hub leader mm -hmm. wants to sow $10 a month and every meeting they just pull up their app and they push the little give button and just give $10 right? And nobody else in their group gives it. Let's just say nobody else in their group. Okay. That is 400 times 10 is 4,000. And God said that that would pay for a full-time person to come on to do all the admin required for these prayer hubs. Right now we have volunteers wow. that are doing the best they can wow. and people that are doing it for nothing. Um, because we don't have the, um, we, we just don't have the funds to pay somebody right now, but it's coming. But he was like, no, it's wow. the simple, Jenny. If every leader wow. gave $10 a month, then you could hire the person to do the admin for it, which they deserve to be paid for it. It's a wow. lot of work. And we have to hire wow. to get to a million. We're going to have to have a whole team of actually full-time admins yeah. that are doing this because it's going to be a lot. 
So I just want you to know, like your $10, you might think, oh, $10, what's that? That is somebody taking care of a nation. Yeah. That is somebody helping us get to a million prayer That's hubs. right. So do not disregard the $10 a month. Please do not. And if you, you know, I don't even have the, the banner up here, but you can do this through the planning center app. If you are part of our prayer hubs and if you are not, I want you to be part of our prayer hubs. So we want you to join or start one. But the easiest thing to do right now would be to go to her voice movement, mvmt.com. And you can go to the giving link there and you can, you can just click on become a monthly partner. And we appreciate it so very much because we want to take care of the people who are taking care of the kingdom, taking care That's of right. God's dream for a million. So I invite you to be a part of that. That's right. Do you have anybody to prophesy over? Yeah. Well, speaking of prayer hubs, um, this was a long, like when we first started, okay. but it was Elaine Trammell. And what's really funny, Elaine, is right when I saw your name, it was like a poof. And it was tell her to start a prayer hub. She has to start a prayer hub. Like it was like, and I, I normally don't like, it even sounds weird to like prophesy that, but um, yeah, I know okay. that that was God. And it was like, a, it was like a hit in my stomach. And then catch this right after that you posted on there and I popped it up on the screen. I'm starting a prayer hub. Um, and I think you start soon. And so I saw, um, number one, thank you for your obedience because God is totally on your prayer hub. It is going to be absolute fire from heaven. I don't even know where you are. I saw like the Utah Arizona area. I don't know where you're located, but I just saw heat. I saw fire. I wow. saw just radical encounters through these prayer points that people will come and they've never even prayed out loud before. Um, this is for everybody, but especially you, Elaine, like they're going to be able to go back into their homes and actually start praying for their family, start praying for their, um, just their, their life and their churches and their things. And so, um, it's, it's almost like the unassuming people, like the unassuming people will come, um, to your prayer hub and they will literally get lit on fire by Jesus. Amen. And it's only going to be through your obedience, through just opening up your home. And those prayer points are fire. And so I know that things are going to be activated. So Lane, I hope you're still on here. I hope that, um, you're encouraged. And right now I pray against all doubt and anything that would come against you, um, your yes, any doubt or any activity from, um, from the devil right now, in the name of Jesus, we cancel every demonic assignment that would come against your prayer hub yes. and come against you starting, um, Jesus even just name. in your home, just everything lined up in the name of Jesus and protection and angels around that prayer hub. And so, um, I bless you, Elaine. Thank you for being obedient. Um, and then here's the ones that I have for, oh, yeah. oh. To claim that. Okay. Um, these ones for you. And then I'll, okay. um, I'll talk to her really quick. So Shauna, um, Saboski, um, I saw that you were wanting to start a prayer hub in your coffee shop and wanting to do that. And I just wanted to pray for you, um, That's so awesome. that that would come to fruition, that that would fully, um, come into the fullest expression that God would have it. And don't just think that that was a flyby idea, but that was, um, the Holy spirit. So I felt him on that. And so we just blessed your coffee shop to become a powerful pl place of prayer and igniting um, for that city. And so I'm not sure where your coffee shop is at, but in the name of Jesus, we just bless that, that whole street, that whole block, that whole neighborhood, that city. And um, thank you, God, that revival is starting in those streets, wherever your shop is. And I thank you, God, for the revival fire that other businesses will see what you're doing and they will open up um, prayer and they will, um, they will do that faithfully in the name of Jesus. So thank you, God, for that. Amen. Amen. I wanted to tell you guys a story and I'm going to go a little bit on a limb here. And I just looked at the, the names that Tiffany wrote for me. She wrote them really big. So I don't have my glasses or my contacts guys. <laughs> so she wrote them big for me on this piece of paper. And I'm like, God, am I really reading these names right now? That's kind of incredible. Um, because I was thinking about this story as a testimony to tell you and to prophesy this over you. Let me tell you the story. Um, Bob and I are at this point where he's, um, he's getting one of our houses ready to sell in another location. He's just doing a lot of stuff. And, and I am like, my hands are in a lot of things. And so there's some household things that need to be taken care of at home. And we're kind of looking at each other going, this house is going to fall apart. <laughs> and so he was like, we need to find somebody that can come in and who really, really, really likes to 
clean and laundry and like, like just somebody who just gets energized by working and efficient. And that's a pretty specific person, right? Um, there's a lot of teenagers you can hire and that kind of thing, but I'm looking for somebody very specific. And I was like, you know what? I, I, I need, you know, what I need, I need Jessica's sister. Well, Jessica's <laughs> name is here. Um, Jessica Wall is on here. And so I'm going to, I'm going to prophesy over you, Jessica, but I'm actually going to use this as your, you as a point of reference to give this corporate word, because, um, I mean, I was kind of running around in circles in my head for a couple of weeks going who, okay, who is just like Jessica's sister. Jessica's sister is like, man, she is a worker bee. She is energized by just dialed in. Like she's everything. I'm not like, like, where is somebody like her God, you know? And, um, so I'm thinking Jessica's sister and I'm feeling like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of at this place where I'm like at a wall and your last name is wall. Like I'm stuck at this wall. So I'm just going to corporately prophesy right here that God is saying that you are, and, and this is what he told me before I read your name is that you are one whisper away, one whisper prayer away wow. from me answering your prayer. And so I was in my kitchen and I heard the Lord say, why don't you just ask me, why don't you just ask me for that person, Jenny? And so I, I whispered. Mm -hmm. Tiffany, I was like taking out the garbage or something. I wasn't even in my prayer chair. I wasn't in prayer time. I just whispered like, God, I, I'm, I'm ready for you to bring me that person. I need that person. It was a whisper prayer. And I could tell that it was like, oh, asking. That's right. Asking wow. is the other side. Mm -hmm. And I know that this kind of goes back to what so we were all beautiful. talking about, but, the, but there's a wall and it's like, it's like, instead of the wailing wall, maybe it's just ask. Right. Wow. So that was it. And then, um, so, so the Lord told me, Ask Melissa. That's her name. Her name is Melissa. Ask Melissa if she knows anybody like her. <laughs> do you know people <laughs> like you? Do they find you? You're kind of running. <laughs> How does this sometimes. all work? Yeah, yeah you like, do. Where are people right? like it's you? True. Right? It's, it's true. It's true. Yeah. So anyway, um, so Melissa <laughs> Fowler's name is on here. That's not the, that's not the Melissa. It's a different Melissa. But I thought, okay, that's interesting. There's a Melissa on here because um, her name is Melissa. And um, so I I just audio texted Melissa, this other Melissa, and I said. Um, do you know somebody like you? And I just need part-time, just a few hours a week. Um, or maybe it's you. I mean, I'm going to let, maybe you want to do it, you know, but she's, I, I, she's always busy. She's always doing what she's doing. Right. Um, and so she audio texts me back or she texts me back and she said, I was just telling my family last night. Now remember the whisper prayer, Whoa, come the on. whisper prayer was the day before she goes, I was just telling my family last night. I think I need to get a part-time job. I need to find something else, something, just another fill in. And, um, Thank you, God. I was like, oh boy, that was all really Whoa. too easy. That was too easy. Uh -huh. That was too easy yeah. for me to like be walking around my house going, how are we going to keep up with this? Okay, Bob's going to be working on the house over there. I was literally trying to figure out how is this actually, I was, I was trying to figure it out. That was actually me with the plane tickets. It's the yes. same thing every time. What in the heck? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> So I whisper prayer, I broke oh, through the wall. So I see Jessica wall come on. and then it was Melissa. And I heard that Jessica, you're a whisper away and that's corporate prophecy right now. We're, what, what, what whisper prayer? It, I didn't have to like, you know, journal about it for 10 days. Wow. I didn't have to turn on, you know, come a playlist. On. I didn't have to come like on. go for a 20 minute walk. I didn't have to fast. Maybe you will have to fast. Maybe you will have to go on a 20 minute walk with Jesus. I don't know. But God's like, don't Jenny, don't forget about the whisper prayers. Don't yes, forget about the ones yes. where you're just like. Lord, if I, I need help right here. Yeah. So I'm asking you to find me the person, well, you know, and then, um, and then Melissa Fowler, I, be, I believe that you are the answer to somebody's whisper prayer. There's somebody out there. It's like, on. you're going to be vacuumed in Come on. <laughs> on the other side of something. And That's you're going to bring a solution. You're going to be like the Melissa was to me. You're going to be like the person who steps in um, on the other side to help somebody in some way. I don't know how that's going to be. I don't know if it's business. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's, um, service. I mean, whatever it is, it's awesome. And it's a, you are an answer to prayer. So we just, um, bless both of you in Jesus name. And then Myra Dunn, Myra, um, I, I see that, um, the picture that God's showing me is like a fresh garden bed that has no harvest. There's no fruit or anything in it because you just planted it. You just got it ready. Mm. So God is saying, um, pull the weeds out. Let's start wow. fresh, like a fresh canvas wow. and get the fresh dirt down, so to speak. And let's start planting something new mm. and let's go through the stages. Let's go through the steps it takes to do something new and don't rush your way into like, I want this thing to bear fruit. Um, he's, he's just kind of giving you permission to start fresh. 
Wow. So um, I just know that, that you know, we, we prophesy in part. So, you, you know, there's a whole lot of that that I obviously didn't prophesy, but I just see fresh, like a fresh garden bed with fresh, rich soil. And you're just laying that down and you're getting it ready to do something new and don't hang on to the past. Um, let it go. Let go of the things that were even God that God's like, yeah, that season's over. Just, wow. you know, that was a good time. And now we're doing something different. So sometimes we like to hang on to the past of what worked and what was and all the things because it was so great, the past victories. And we just did, we just get to thank God for that. And we get to remember how good he was. Yeah. And the remembrance of that takes us into the next season of starting fresh. Right. And then um, Mike and Peggy Moore from Vancouver, Washington. Um, you know, you guys' names always just kind of come in clutch here on this prophetic stuff. It's <laughs> like I, I, people Every probably time. prophesied to you so many times, but, um, what I, the picture I'm seeing is yes, more, yes, God has more for you. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's an area of your life that you feel like, um, like if you were to sit on a stool and one of the legs was short and it clicks back and forth mm -hmm. on it, it's so annoying, right? Mm -hmm. You put a piece of paper <laughs> under it, you like do something to like get it stable. Yep. And I feel like you have felt that way in your life in a certain area. Like this is stable. This is good. This is good. But this, what is going on here? This area of my life is like, it's just, I need more here. And so I just want to prophesy and decree and agree with you right now that whatever is missing mm. will come, will appear, will manifest itself because everything that we need in Jesus is, is already provided for us. Ephesians talks about mm -hmm. how it is already provided for us. It's already for us. It's all through wow. the Bible that it's for us. You, it's already there. We're already resourced with it. So um, I just say, receive the more in Jesus name, receive the extension of whatever feels like it's short. It's not enough. Receive the extension, mm -hmm. receive the overflow of that. And um, we call your life into stability and balance through these um, incredible miracles and incredible provision that God so desires. And he loves to provide for us, everybody. He loves it. One of his names is Jehovah Jireh, my God who provides. He is a provider. That's one of his That's attributes. Right. And so That's lean right. into that, lean into the person of, of um, God in that as Jehovah Jireh in mm. Jesus name. One more for Julie Shaber. I just really um, wanted to bless you. I feel like God is telling you that you're, or probably reminding you that you are a catalyst to connections, catalyst to connections. And I saw mm -hmm. you putting fuel and fire on, um, just helping people just understand their, their abilities and their giftings and encouraging people to just, yeah, come on. Like you're like the, yeah, the, yeah, come on girl. Like, let's just do it. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. Do, do that. Like, yeah, don't think about that too much. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And so Julia, I just, um, yeah, just catalyst connector and you're, you are a catalyst to this season. You are something that moves people forward and, um, you're a wind behind people's back, behind people's backs. So in Jesus name, I just want to bless you. Amen. Okay. You, you guys, one last reminder that we want you to apply, start lead. You might just want to join a prayer hub, which would be cool, but we're really looking for people who want to start it. Don't forget about your teenagers at home. Don't forget yes. about maybe even your six-year-old. You can start a prayer hub with your six-year-old. You know what? Mm -hmm. Please, yeah. please have your kids in a prayer hub. I'm in a couple different ones. My my littles, my five and my seven-year-old, Tiffany's son, who mm -hmm. is only five, six, six, how old is he? Six. six. He's little. And he's in the prayer hub. And they're learning to pray for America. They're learning to pray for their families. They're yeah. learning to pray for their schools, for their government for their communities. Isn't that amazing? So um, you guys be blessed and start a prayer hub. Start it today. Go online, yeah. get in there, put your application in and start it up. We're going a million strong and we want you to be a part of that. All right. Talk to you guys soon and see many of you at the intensive in September. All right. Bye. You guys have Bye. a great rest of your day.